In this video, I'm going to talk about victory and defeat. I think it often happens that people don't understand the word to win. For example, if your football team played against the Brazilian national team and they only lost by three goals to nil, would you consider that a victory? Or alternatively, if you buy a lottery ticket and you get your money back, then would you consider that a victory? I don't know. I'm just putting this forward because normally you have aims. If in the aforementioned lottery ticket, you had an aim of winning 100 euros on a 10 euro ticket and you only won 50, would you consider that a defeat? This is very important when we're talking about things like wars, because what is a victory and what is a defeat? Your aims, if you succeed in getting your aims, then you can say that you have won. Let's have a look at the Second World War now. So in 1939, Hitler and Stalin started World War II by an agreement called the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact, which was backed up by further agreements dividing up Europe and sharing out the spoils of this joint communist Nazi imperialist adventure. Now, let's have a look at what the Kremlin got out of it. Well, it attacked Poland alongside its Nazi ally and took more than half of Poland. It then attacked Finland. Well, it was, you may say, well, the Finns won. Well, they didn't because at the end of the day, they had to sue for peace and lost 10% of their territory. The Soviet Union also uh, managed to occupy Estonia. And you may say, well, Estonia became independent uh, after the breakup of the Soviet Union. Yes, that's true. But you could also say that Russia is still holding Estonian territory, which it did not return. So how does that work out? OK, it's not a lot. That might be a subject of a different video. What about Latvia, Lithuania, two countries both occupied by the Soviet Union in the um, time of its alliance with Hitler? And the Soviet Union also made demands on territory on Romania under the threat of war. Romania had no choice. So six countries attacked and three of them were completely occupied. Of course, the Soviet Union wanted to have another crack at Finland, but it didn't come out like that. The Nazis also benefited from this attack because it, it closed off their um, eastern flank, so to speak, the, the potential of a, a two-front war. It managed to occupy the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, well, putting in a puppet regime in half of France, but it was a major success. It might have knocked out the United Kingdom had the also. So um, this was quite successful. Now, in to go off on a little bit of a tangent, which is the whole point of this, um, in 1939, Germany obtained only around 15% of its oil from Europe. The rest came from outside of Europe. As the United Kingdom controlled the seas, then Hitler was able to get the green light for his war thanks not only to military support from his ally Stalin, but also thanks to the oil that was supplied by the Soviet Union. The tanks required fuel, and it was the tanks that were doing most of the running, unlike in the First World War, where it was the trains and then it was on foot. The United Kingdom and France realised that it was the oil uh, that was doing the war, um, funding the war, if you like. It was the oil, which was the important thing. And so they had an idea of bombing the Soviet production sites. This information fell into Nazi hands after the occupation of France and was passed on to the Soviet Union. Now, the current um, regime in uh, Russia claims that this shows that Britain and France intended on attacking the Soviet Union, which is a bit of a perversion of history, but that's the way they do things there. In 1939, roughly 10% of Soviet crude oil production came from north of the Caucasus, and that was places such as Maikop, 
which fell to the Nazis, uh, and Grozny, which um, there was an offensive directed against, but it was not captured. Around 80% came from south of the Caucasus, mainly in what is today Azerbaijan. There are, of course, other Soviet oil fields which have grown in importance um, since then, or now Russian oil fields. Now, if the point of the war was to get a hold of raw materials and living space, then a more logical course of action would have been to occupy Turkey, which then offered relatively easy access to those oil fields, as well as the potential of heading off south to Iran and Iraq. Now, of course, I do appreciate that uh, Turkey is a more difficult country geographically to attack than the Soviet Union, but it would have been a lot weaker. It's more difficult to attack because it's quite mountainous and the supply routes to Turkey itself would have been um, more difficult to maintain than, for example, the supply routes to the Soviet Union. But its ar army was a fraction of the size of the Soviet army. Now, I appreciate that Hitler didn't know of the Balkan situation until Mussolini sprang it upon him in October 1940. And that is to say, when Mussolini attacked Greece, Hitler had already decided he was going to attack the Soviet Union. Having said that, Hitler's plans were not changeable. They could have changed. Indeed, they had to change because of the what happened uh, later in the Balkans. The, the date was set back. And that date being set back probably worked in Hitler's favour. I said probably. I know there's an argument against it. Now, once the Balkans had been occupied and Bulgaria was firmly in the Nazi camp, then perhaps some consideration could have been given to the overall strategic situation. After Hitler turned on his ally Stalin, Romania had to make up the shortfall of oil. This was achieved by increasing production, but the Romanians warned the Germans as early as late 1941 that this was not going to continue and that the country possessed insufficient reserves. In the summer of 1942, Hitler decided to attack the Soviet oil fields, although in such a half-hearted way that Stalingrad was deemed to be a more important target, thus leading to a major defeat. So in the summer of 1942, had Hitler concentrated on the Caucasus, would this have captured the oil fields? Now, there's very good reasons to suggest that this wouldn't have happened, because one thing that did happen in the offensive that took place in the summer of 1942 was massive traffic jams. They were unable to coordinate uh, the amount of troops properly and get supplies to them, uh, also bearing in mind the weak uh, nature of the roads in the Soviet Union and the lack of railway lines. Another important point as well is, is Stalingrad going off and favour of Stalingrad. Now, if Stalingrad had been called Tsaritsyn, as it was before, or Volgograd, as it was later, would Hitler have attacked it? I don't know. Possibly not. Possibly this was a prestige objective. Now, given the proximity to the border of the Soviet Union's oil resources, and given that Hitler did not attack them via Turkey... Could it be argued that Hitler didn't see these resources of, as having particular importance? Hitler's later claim that his generals knew nothing about the economic resources of war was used uh, when retreats were necessary from metal-producing regions, such as in uh, what is today the eastern Ukraine, and... Uh, this suggests to me that Hitler um, used this as an excuse, but didn't fully appreciate the economic resources himself. Now, if Hitler realised that um, the oil, or accepted that the oil, wasn't so important, what was there in the Western 
parts of the Soviet Union that Hitler thought more important to get his hands on and thus fulfill his war aims. If you've got any suggestions, put them in the comments below.